right, um, today I'll be talking about laying a solid foundation for elementary piano students. These are the kids that come through our door every year, brand new, ready, excited, and eager for learning piano. And as I sat down to think about this program, I thought, what are the basic building blocks that we work with each week in lessons? And I came up with um, four, well, actually five. There's um, rhythm and beat, keyboard awareness and note identification, ear training, technique and artistry, and then in the center of it all, I, I like to think of creativity and motivation as something that will hold everything together. Creative as teachers, encouraging creativity in students and motivating our students as well. So we'll get started with the beat. The beat starts not just when they walk through the door. It starts before they walk through the door. It can start when they're two or three years old. And we want those kids to be listening to all types of music at home and have their parents encourage them to incorporate, you know, different movement, even dancing, you know, feel the beat. Um, another thing that we could also incorporate is Del Croce Rhythmics. This is something that I would like to learn more about. I kind of did a little bit of research, but not too much. Um, also, in their lesson, when they first start, in those very first pieces, one thing we can help them with their beat is by playing those duets with them. I think once they hear us keeping a steady beat, they will be moving along um, the same way. Once we get past uh, maybe the first or second year, I encourage the students, make sure you have a metronome. And for those kids, they sometimes they don't want to run out and, and buy a metronome for 30 bucks. I mean, so I say, hey, you know that iPad that your parents have or that you have? A lot of kids have their own iPad these days. You can download a metronome for free. Set it up there on your, on your um, piano rack, and that will help you out. Also, with the iPad, there are things that would keep a metronome um, beat with uh, different rhythms. You know, when you go to the mall and you hear that digital piano playing, doo -doo 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 -doo. I always have the kids try out their songs on the digital piano to help keep the beat with that. And that, I mean, it makes it fun, it makes it exciting, and they love it. Um, so then, with our with our iPad, I found this game that will help students, but I'm just addicted to it, so I shouldn't even start it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll start it. Okay, so the most addicting sheep game. Has anybody seen this before? Okay, what it is, and it's nothing too involved. All you have to do is tap the screen to make the sheep jump over the gaps. It's to the beat. So it's not going to show up there. So this is like the training mode, and it tells you how to hit the screen. I was almost late there. And it gets more and more difficult. Oh! <laughs> so it gets more and more difficult as you go on, and then they have the training mode, and then the more difficult and it goes really fast and you have to hit the screen really fast as well. Um, when my students miss a lesson, you might find me playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, I could be planning or anything in the studio, but I'm just going to play my sheep game. I'm going to work on my beat. <laughs> the most addicting sheep game, and that's actually in there too. Um, on the back pages I have a listing of sites that I visit um, for teaching ideas and then I also have a listing of different apps that I have and their approximate cost if you have an iPad. Um, moving on to rhythm. This was always great fun um, when I taught for the prep program I set up a PowerPoint presentation with basic rhythms, quarter notes and half notes, eighth notes as they move on and it becomes more complicated. And so, always before we start with those little ones, in the first couple of years, I have them tap out the piece. But not just tap out the piece. I mean, when they see me go over to this box, they're like, ooh, <laughs> the box. And so, 
I keep all my eggs in the egg area. They love it. So, um, and then another thing you can do, just low technology, is on poster board you can write out rhythms, quarter notes and half notes and whatnot, and then just have stacks of them. And what the student can do is they can rearrange those on the floor and also clap and tap them together. You've worked out your own rhythms. One thing to incorporate when clapping or tapping rhythms are also animal noises and other noises as well. Can you imagine going moo, 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 meow? <laughs> you know, it, it adds a new challenge and it makes it fun for those kids. Um, and then when the students are working on a piece and you just cannot get that rhythm, they cannot get that rhythm, and it's become impossible. Every week they come back with the wrong rhythm. And you're like, oh, this is tough. What I do is I have them, um, we make up words to the song. Mm -hmm. Like in the Faber series, in those two B books, they have the Boogie Woogie Pumpkin with the Bay mm -hmm. Rest. You know that one? Yes. Kids love that song. Mm -hmm. But I had a student come back with the wrong rhythm. Um, the first week. So I thought, okay, well, we'll write in the counts. That'll help us. She's sixth grader. We can write in the counts. That's going to help us out. Uh, no, not really. After two or three minutes, it wasn't. So finally, we came up with words. Syllables. 
with the students. Numbers or syllables? Yeah. Depends on the student and the age. Yes. Anything out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I say they're doing it in the mind. No, no, not cool. Okay, so for my students, we say ta on the quarter notes and ta ah when they get to about their third year. I start writing in counts or have them write in the counts. That helps out too. And so one time I was writing in one and two and three and four and then my students said, Oh, I know, it's twelve. She thought I was writing her a math problem. I was like, That's not even the right answer. <laughs> In the middle, between the two staffs, finger numbers either go up above or down below. Okay, so activity. Activity. You want animal sounds or rhythm instruments? Yeah. Animal sounds. Okay. Uh -huh. right. So we're my keyboard buddies, and we, we race with the keyboard buddies. You're laughing. Kia. You can pick a keyboard buddy for this sign. A frog. A little frog. Ribbit. Ribbit. Okay. So you guys are the ribbits? Oh, I don't know what a giraffe says. What does a giraffe say? They're quiet. They're a rest. A rest. We better come up with something else. Okay. So, we'll pick something else. Muriel. Oh, I don't know what this guy says either. <laughs> oh, a dog. You got the dog. These are little Iwako Japanese erasers. I ordered them off of Amazon. And so once I got my pack of 30, I used, you know, some of them. They match up with keys. I'll show you that later. But um, once they ma once I got them matched up with the key, then I used the rest for prizes. And I'll talk about that later, too. The kids love them. So you guys are dogs, so you're like, arf, arf, or do you say bark, bark? You arf, pick it, arf, 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 and you guys are froggies, frogs, ribbit, ribbit. Okay, are we ready? Frogs and dogs. Okay, ready? Go. So we got, arf, 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 arf. arf.
sitting there, and I'm like, okay, let's start on C, and they're like, do, do. I was like, okay, yeah, we gotta, we gotta review this, and I gotta help you out with this. So one thing I do is I send them. Oh, I'm sitting on my iPad. My poor iPad might not make it.
Yeah, they're perfect. And I, and Susan Paradis had those. She'd been using them on her website. I was like, I gotta find out what those are. So I searched Amazon high and low for those lovely reasons and found them. Um, now here we have Isabella and Celeste, and they're playing the great keyboard race game. What I like about that game, they're identifying their keys. They can play that with an older sibling or their parent. We played in the studio, but it seems no matter what happens, I always lose. <laughs> and so there, there are two sets of cards. In this case, it's fall, so we have our pumpkins and we have our leaves. And what I have the students do is they mix up their cards, and it's all random. However, the first take on this, poor Sophia, she picks C. So she's at the top, and she moves her key buddy to C. And then her next card she flipped over was B. And then her next card was B flat. And I was like, we're going nowhere fast. <laughs> so I was like, okay, stop, redo, mix them up. And so with the older kids, who still love this game, even though it's for younger kids, we talk about what distance did you move? Did you move a second or a third or a fourth or a fifth? And oh my goodness, I just moved a seventh. Look at that. That's the, the farthest I can move. And so each of them have a set of cards. One down, starts down low and one starts up high. And then whoever makes it past middle C first wins. And no matter how hard I try, I always seem to lose on the right side. But we'll go ahead and watch this one. So she got A. She flips it over and she's got F sharp. She hasn't learned sharps yet, so her sister's going to tell her where F sharp is. Right there. Help her out. That promotes cooperation. <laughs> I've had some misses on duets this year where the sisters trying to kill each other. <laughs> it's not pretty. I'm like, okay, we gotta get these kids working together in a different environment. And so, yeah, just move them along slowly. Sometimes you draw a big, big jump, like sixth or seventh, and sometimes it's just a step. But you gotta laugh, have fun. It's random. Do you try to reach middle C? Yeah, so whoever well, gets past middle C first wins. So she's got E and the younger ones get closer. And then here at the end, she draws B flat. And her sister tells her, you have to go back down to B flat. Because she's on B. I'm like, no, no. She gets to go up to B flat. She drew a seventh and she just won. <laughs> So there she's drawing B. I don't know what it is about those upper notes. I always lose. <laughs> you should switch sides if you can. Yeah, but I, don't, I really don't want those kids to lose. I just want to. <laughs> and then I, I try and be like a sword who's going, oh, you beat me again. What am I going to win this game? <laughs> Cheering, so it's, it's really encouraging. Yay! 
And my horse is winning. It's all good. Ooh, I hit the wrong one. So it's all good. Oh. It's all here.
piano is too nice. <laughs> but we can um, we can play it and just have like finger two and say, what did we do? Oh, we went up a skip. And then what next? Go down a skip. Go up a skip. Go up a skip. Go up a skip. Go up a skip. And we step through it like that. And that's just, you know, a little bit of review at each lesson. I forgot to tell you. Okay. Also, for those worksheets, before I got the iPad, I just got it last month. I'm so excited. I had the caveman iPad. <laughs> and so then I start going ooga booga caveman iPad. My students like, don't do that. That's crazy. You're freaking me out. So what I do with the caveman iPad is those worksheets. I had printed off. I can put them in there, and then they can complete the worksheet, and then you can erase it. So you don't have to keep printing out worksheets for the students. And so that worked really well at the time. Where'd you get that? I ordered off Amazon, but I think they have them at Target and Walmart. What is it really called? Oh, what is it called? It's the Crayola Dry Erase yeah. Marker Center or something like that. They're actually cheaper on Amazon. I think they're like yeah. eight dollars, but yeah. I think they're like ten or twelve in Target. Yeah. But then you have to pay four dollars shipping anyway. <laughs> well, unless you have Prime. It, yeah. yeah, and then it's, <laughs> it's then free.
as we start those about the second year. And I also encourage different ways to practice the five finger patterns, not just legato, but also incorporate staccato. Or if we're learning a new dynamic like fortissimo or pianissimo, we incorporate that. Uh, crescendos and diminuendos, or like I'll say, when you're playing this, accent that third finger, da da da, you know. And we'll have different rhythms as well. On the back of your handout is the five finger express. That's from our Music Cafe C books. And that, you can play a different five finger pattern each day. Well, no, you play all your five finger patterns. I want to get that mixed up. Play all your five finger patterns six days and a different rhythm each day. And sometimes they get a little bit mixed up looking at that. And they'll just go C, 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 C. But I'm like, no, you got to kind of demonstrate it for a little bit. And then also maybe write in the finger numbers so they, just to start with, so they get it. And they understand what's going on. And then once they've worked with that five finger express, I say, why don't you write your own rhythm for, you know, your five finger pattern? 